so I'm back in the room. Uh, went out, shot a few images. What I'm gonna show right now are four images. I'm going to show two from the Canon and two from the Phase One Arca RM3DI setup. Uh, this is my first time looking at these. I just chose four really quick, so I opened it up, I went through, I grabbed four that were really similar, three that were really similar, and then one more to show the stitching in Photoshop and how quick that happens. So right now, let's go ahead and um, take a look at the images. So I have Capture One open here, and uh, you can see my four images. There's the ones that are .iiq. That's the file format that comes out from the Phase One, and then the .cr2 or the Camera Raw from Canon. I'm shooting the Canon at 100% of its uh, sensor size, so I didn't crop the sensor. It's shooting at 50 megapixels at ISO 100, the base ISO, and the Phase One was shooting at ISO 50. You can see one of them right off the bat from the Phase One is overly is overexposed. But let's just take a look here really quick. One thing that's great about the Phase One or really medium format backs, especially CCD ones, that they have a massive amount of dynamic range. And so when you're overexposed or slightly underexposed, you can pull up the shadows, you can pull down the highlights, you can do a lot with the image. So if we look here at the histogram, we can see up here in the highlights that it's just a lot, um, you know, the, the exposure is a lot higher than it should be. So we could, if we wanted, just tell Capture One to do an auto exposure. That fixed it a little bit. We could even bring the exposure down a little bit more and um, take a look at maybe if we bump some shadows up. And you can see the image looks a lot better. There's not really any noise introduced. Um, the white here on the building is still a little too exposed. So let's go ahead and reset the image. I'm just gonna revert the changes that I made. So it's back to how it was. Let's just zoom in here. So we can zoom in on the building itself, see how sharp it is. So it was definitely in focus. It's, you can see from here, the medical group that's here, right dead on focus wise. And um, if we come down here to the foliage, to the fire hydrant, lots of detail here. Come down to where the street meets. Looks good, it is overexposed though, so let's just go to another image. And what I'm going to do, because these two images, with the exception that their white balance is off, I didn't take the time I see now when I originally started shooting this to um, set the white balance, make sure the white balance was the same on both cameras. So we'll disregard the color for now. We'll probably do a different test later on with that, but I'll disregard the color and let's just look at the details in the images. So I'll select both of these, which in our Capture One viewer brings it up. And you can see the first thing that you notice about the two images besides color or whatever is that they're different aspect ratios. So the medium format does have a different aspect ratio on the sensor than a DSLR does. But let's take a look here. Um, we'll start out with the Canon. So 50.6 megapixels, I was about 121 feet away from the corner of the building right here, the front corner, and um, about 121 feet, shot at F11. So let's take a look. I mean, this definitely looks sharp, right? So we get in there, we can see the individual trees. Um, I don't see at this point, and I'd have to blow these up much larger. I have the screen size constrained so that they'll show up well on the video here. But uh, this loop tool, you know, I can come in, I'm coming in at 100% now and showing the detail on the tree is great. Come along the edge of the curb. Let's find a sign. So I think here is a handicap sign. And so this is probably 170 feet away or so. You can still definitely read or know that that says parking only. Um, we can look at this building in the background. This is probably a football field, football field and a half away, maybe 300 to 400 feet. Um, even the details into these palm trees. While it's getting a little bit soft because those palm trees are considerably farther back, so the depth of field here at F11, we've probably reached the far limit, right? The, the far edge of that focus and where the near edge is, you know, somewhere up in here. Um, a lot of detail in the trees, like here against the far side of the building, Canyon Medical Plaza, everything looks to be really in focus, pretty sharp. Um, yeah, this looks great. If we go to the phase, oh well. So the phase is a 40 megapixel back, the Canon's 50. Um, I might have to play with the Canon more because I can see right off the bat. If we just look here at this medical group, the phase from the same distance, um, the faces have arguably better glass. The sensor should be better. Um, the rodent stock lens that's on that technical camera is amazing. So this looks good, like that's in focus, but this from the same distance, like that's just a whole other category. You can really see the crisp edges, especially on the building here, or this where it says allergy and asthma, then let's look up into where the blinds are. 
come over here. And that's a big difference. Now one thing as well is I could move the Canon forward a little bit. The 24 millimeters isn't quite equal to the 40 millimeter rodent stock. And you can see that because just besides the wider frame, I do have more of from the top of the building to the top of the frame and more from the bottom down here. So if I maybe scoot it forward 20 feet or so, 15 to 20 feet, maybe 30 feet, we could probably get a little bit better comparison. So I might do that. But right off the back, I, mean, I think that this is a bit sharper over here. If we look at, um, like let's go to the, yeah, like the sign there, like that's incredible. It is um, considerably sharper now, it is bigger. So I could scoot forward. Um, I think the cannon looks great, but yeah, I mean, look at the fire hydrant here with the leaves. So take a look at that fire hydrant and where you can see that it says right here, it looks like it says maybe Jones. And I don't think I can really see that. Not great, like the detail just isn't there on the cannon. Um, but that's really nitpicking, right? So most of the architecture photos that I take, I don't, I don't do large prints. I'm doing these four companies that are putting these into their annual reports. They're putting them into their sustainability reports. They're putting them on their websites. <clears throat> so the largest, largest that these are ever really printed at are maybe 11 by 17. If it's a you know, dual side full bleed on the inside of a report that's eight and a half by 11 you know, letter size, it might be 11 by 17. Um, either one of these images are gonna hold up really well. I mean, the details on the Canon look good. Just the phase, I mean, that definitely looks, still looks better. And one interesting thing, let me see if I can find it in Capture One here, is um, let's turn on the uh, focus peaking. So this green that pops up, this is similar to what popped up on the digital back. I can also show it in uh, Capture One. But what you can ascertain from this is if this tree here is in focus and this tree back here is in focus, everything in between is gonna be in focus, whether it's highlighting it or not. And you can see that like these edges on here are super sharp. Like look at the twigs coming, just the individual pieces coming off this hedge. Let's find that on the cannon over here. Like they're there, but that's nowhere near what the face has. If you look at the detail there, then look at the detail here. That's massively different. So I think one thing that I might do, if I'm just shooting a straight on image, is I'll take the uh, phase out on my Hasselblad body with just a 35 millimeter lens, not worried about shifting or anything, and take, and take a picture and see how that stacks up. Um, this is, and I'll just say it, an unfair comparison between the technical camera that's $10,000 for the body and the lens, and then the back. So do you take the body and the lens, that's 10 grand against a Canon 5 DSR, the total is $3,500, $3,600. Pretty unfair. Um, this does maybe sway me to you know, not look at my 5 DSR for, like my 5 DSR maybe for when I'm traveling or for um, architecture work where I don't have a lot of particular needs, like the multi-row stitching or um, something I have to be just super, super picky over. Um, like I said, an image like this would stand up. So let's turn that focus peaking off, come back. Now I'll show you um, the one thing that I talked about while I was shooting this out in the field. These two images are both from the Canon and they're just shifted, right? So up here you have a lot more sky. Um, both images have the entire building. So while this isn't the best example, I will show you in Photoshop really quick how to, um, well, not how to stitch these because you could just hit auto align and auto blend in Photoshop, but I will show you how they stack up to each other um, and how there's no geometric distortion or anything. So let's do that really quick. I'll open Photoshop here and just say open with Photoshop. It pops up Adobe Camera Raw because it is a raw image. So I will just say uh, open image. So now I've got both images here. I have the one where we, where we shot it first, then where we shipped it up. I'm just gonna grab really quick. I'm going to, um, just so I can move, I'm gonna unlock that layer. I'll just create a new layer really quick. Um, come over here. Just copy this over into that new layer. So now I've got the two images. You can see if I turn this off where I am. So I have the one with the sky behind and or in front and the other one behind. Let's just change that really quick. Um, no, let's leave that like it was. So what I wanna do is I'm going to show 
just if we made this image, if we stitched these together, made them a little bit bigger. So you can see right now if I just change my opacity down to, wait, let's do it on this one, 50%. You can see how these are. So now I've got my two images here. I can bring these together. Um, so let's do this. Let's look here. See how these line up? Really quickly, I can just select both though. Go over to edit, and just say auto align layers. And I just have to do auto. It doesn't need to do any geometric distortion or vignette, there's not a vignette here. So click this, these two will line up, hopefully. And there we go. So now they've aligned. And if I, um, if I make this one that is uh, behind here, just bump its opacity up. You can see a little, bit of, a little bit of stuff here, but now I have that full sky. If I scroll down, I have that full parking lot, and that's a pretty big image now. So if, if we take this off, right, we were missing the sky here. So when I did that shift, I added that. You see how the top of the tree lines right up? It's, um, there's no lines or anything to fix here. So this just lines right up. And if we zoom in here, like there is nothing here to fix at all. It just lines right up. That's how quick and how nice and accurate when you're using shift on your lens it can be for, um, for merging two photos together. I mean, that, that looks great. Like I would, I would still crop this. I would come in here and you know, probably crop this out. So for this, I mean, the one image where I just have the parking lot and it's up higher and I'm getting more of it, that would have been fine, but I wanted to demonstrate what the shift was for. But this is a great image um, overall. So, and you know, like, I mean, I'm being nitpicky when I talk about the sharpness here, because as we get in here, well, you can see some noise, but I mean, that's we're in now at, that's at 400, 300%. So now we're in at 100%, right? And I move around. And there is good detail here. It's just uh, not quite as crisp as the phase one, but still perfectly acceptable, especially on a $3,500 camera. 50 megapixels, you can blow this hip up huge. So let's close this. I am going to open one more thing. I talked about before. Um, that I took this into the studio, did some headshots, and that they were really close, like between the Canon and the phase. So I wasn't gonna do it as part of this video, but I will really quick. I'm gonna bring those up and um, show a few of these images. So this is someone that I had come into my studio recently, uh, Pia, Let's, she came in for a headshot session. Let's do a search really quick. I have rated a few of these. So let's just do it where the rating is equal or greater to a three. Yep, okay, so here's the phase one one. Now let's go in here and grab one of the ones from the Canon. We'll do one with a gray background as well. So let's just grab this one here. Now you can see in the studio, how do these look? So on the left we have the Canon, on the right we have the phase one. Uh, the details for her, like both of them, the color and everything looks awesome. Um, she's got a little bit more exposure on the left one, so I'd probably change that a little bit. And the right one looks a little bit green. I have to tweak the white balance a little bit. But if we look at this, like the details are awesome. She's, um, you know, looks great. It's in focus. Great look to it. I do prefer this medium format aspect ratio more than the Canon. So probably the only thing I would do on this, on this one from the Canon is um, crop it a little bit differently. I will just set it to the same crop size as the, uh, as the phase one and crop into it. But look at this, if we come in here, this looks so clean and arguably <laughs> quite a bit more detail than the phase. So it's interesting, I mean, more light on this one. I could find one with a little more light on the face or just actually change the exposure a bit. Like let's, let's bring that up some. So how do these look? So now if we come in, okay, you can see the detail in her eyes. Obviously their color is a little bit different, but actually quite a bit different. Look at the background. But uh, I had her in, I just switched between cameras. Um, and I think the detail here, like this is a great looking shot. Um, the detail's insane, like the little pieces of makeup. 
um, down to really individual pores, little, you know, just little uh, baby hairs. But that looks awesome. So I think the 5DSR in the studio, shooting headshots, and I know that some people would say to use a 5DS. I like the extra sharpness. I haven't really seen anything with that's exhibited more A. Um, I'm sure that I will, but I haven't. But uh, this looks great. Like, this looks I mean, absolutely awesome. I think it stands up every bit against the phase one. This, um, so if I can figure out if the Canon can shoot just as well as my technical camera, then I would potentially look at just moving to the Canon um, exclusively. Yeah, but I love my medium format setup. So we'll have to see. So thanks for joining me and watching this video. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. Hopefully you got a little bit out of this. If you have any questions or any ideas, something that you'd like me to try between these two cameras, more than happy to. I'm always open to suggestions. Um, sometimes people have way better ideas than I do, a lot of times. So any questions, comments, if you like the video, you got anything out of it, put me a comment below. I reply to all of them. Subscribe, share this out, and um, thanks for taking the time to join me. BillNichols.tv, coming up soon. Until then, just the YouTube channel. But thanks for joining me. Look for new videos, trying to post about three a week. Really appreciate you taking the time to take a view. Thanks a lot.